Think of the smartest, most successful people history has ever known. Which names come to your mind? Be it Einstein, Da Vinci, Bill Gates, Isaac Newton, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, or someone like them. Their success can be attributed to one common factor. They were all polymaths. This means that they specialized and were knowledgeable in several different domains, and they integrated these disparate fields of study to create art, come up with scientific inventions, and so on. Though this might sound intimidating and only achievable for those who are naturally highly intelligent, anyone can become a polymath with the right mindset and attitude. You may have heard that it's better to specialize or master one skill rather than be a jack-of-all-trades. Some cultures even have sayings like, a man with 12 talents has nothing to eat for dinner. However, the modern workplace increasingly requires a more diversified skill set in order to thrive and achieve success. To be the best in the world at one thing, you need to be better than everyone else who specializes in that field. But to be great without being the best at three or more subjects simultaneously is not only rare, but also significantly easier than being the greatest of the great in one field. As such, being a polymath can be critical to leading a successful professional life. And in this book, we're going to discuss how you can start thinking like one, too. Two Paths to Polymathy Over the years, several theories have been presented to explain what makes someone a polymath. One such theory is Howard Gardner's notion of multiple intelligences. To understand this theory, we first need to delve into what the traditional view of intelligence has been. Historically, intelligence has been perceived in fairly one-dimensional ways. Your intellectual capacity was thought to be fixed at birth as a result of your genetic inheritance without any possibility of change in the future. This intelligence mainly consisted of one's ability to comprehend language and logic, which could be measured using some standardized tests, such as IQ tests. Lumen Learning, Keith, 2009. Since then, much progress has been made in broadening our concept of intelligence. Gardner, a Harvard psychologist, considered the traditional view of intelligence insufficient for explaining how different people learn and exhibit their smarts. Where those who are highly articulate or able to solve complex logical problems are often considered to be conventionally intelligent, he emphasized those who are gifted in more creative fields, such as architecture, music, and dance. Those who excel in creative fields rather than logical ones are often labeled as learning disabled, thought to be suffering from ADD, or are simply cast off as underachievers. This is because most classrooms cannot accommodate the ways of learning these individuals need to become more proficient in different subjects and, as a result, these learners don't excel in areas they're actually quite capable of grasping. Gardner's theory revolutionizes this outdated approach to intelligence. So, what is his theory of multiple intelligences all about? According to Gardner, we all possess at least seven unique forms of intelligence through which we learn and retain information. All of these types of intelligence can be cultivated with the right learning tools, although some individuals are more developed in certain forms of intelligence compared to others. His system outlines the following different types of intelligence. 